Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Steph, and today I'm going to be sharing with you an FYI before you buy on the Aritzia Babbitton uh, Canberra Cardian, I think is how you say the name. Anyways, this is a merino wool cardigan. I have it in a size small, and it is $138 Canadian. Now, it says the color is Heather Birch, and on the website, this is a lot more warm toned than I think it actually is. Now, normally, in my opinion, Heather Birch, historically, used to be a lot warmer, like more warm toned than it is now. This is like a very, very, very light gray. Like truly a birch gray is what this would be. Um, and I'm, I'm okay with it. I think for a neutral kind of cool tone, it's great. It does the job. It looks really good with jeans and with blues and stuff like that. It's a little hard to pair with certain off-white shades because of the cooler undertones, but I honestly don't find it too, too bad. And especially with like a true white or something, which I think is what most people would have as a, like a go-to staple in their wardrobe, you're not gonna have any problems with that. So I'm gonna pull up my iPad. We're gonna jump right into this. Um, so this is what it says on the website. It says opt for a luxury model. This is a fully fashioned v-neck cardigan with a three button enclosure and drop shoulders. It's knit with embraced merino, extra fine, 100% merino wool yarn, coveted for its natural warmth and super soft feel. We source, we source ours from a premium Italian mill. It's constructed using half cardigan stitch with distinct vertical ribs for a three dimensional look and feel. The size range is from a 2XS to a 2XL, which is pretty, pretty good. I think that if Aritzia could go up to a 3XL or a 4XL to start to include more of what would be considered traditional plus sizing into their range, that would be great. You guys know I always 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 end up talking about the size ranges and I think it's just simply because especially right now right like I'm I'm filming this all in an era in a year in a month or whatever where the size hasn't changed but if you look back from my original FYI before you buys from like four or five years ago and now, you will notice that there are more things that have either more inseams, different ranges, or even just slightly more sizes. And I think that it's slow progress, but at least there is progress. And the reason I keep talking about it is because inclusivity doesn't happen overnight, right? And I honestly don't even talk about one of the larger issues in fashion, which is the actual like racial diversity, ethnic diversity of the models on their websites is not amazing either. Um, because, okay, there that's another issue, right? But what I really focus on talking about with this clothing reviews are the clothing reviews. Like I try to keep it about the clothes, but there are other issues, right? And we have to keep talking about this. We have to keep bringing it up. We as consumers have to keep demanding for these things to happen for companies to listen to us. And if they're not going to listen, then we as consumers need to either decide to shop somewhere else or live with what we have or to tear down the system, etc., etc., etc. right? But it needs to be talked about. So that is why I always talk about sizing and I will probably keep talking about sizing because honestly, so I live in North America and I know that this is very different continent to continent to continent, but I live in North America, but I'm also, I'm half Asian. I'm Singaporean Chinese and British. So when I am in Singapore and I'm looking at clothes, even if I'm in a store that I know and love, for instance, like Lululemon, there are different size charts based on there is like Western sizing and then there's Asian sizing. And I, as a taller woman, would not 
fit a lot of the pants in like Asian sizing Lululemon in terms of length, right? And that's another problem, but that's a different problem than what we're dealing with here. So I know that there are different size charts that exist. I know that the average body size in Europe for a woman versus North America for a woman is vastly different. If you look between Canada where I live and America, there's also a different size difference. But I just wanna say, I know that there are those differences, right? Let's acknowledge that those differences exist. Let's acknowledge that different companies put out different clothes and different sizing in different countries and different communities and whatnot. It doesn't hurt, for instance, in North America with a diverse population to have that Asian sizing. We can call it something else. We don't have to call it Asian sizing, but to have that inclusivity, to think about a shorter, more petite population to actually make clothes that aren't just shortening the inseam, that are actually addressing things like torso length or chest rib cage sizing or anything like that, right? Like that never hurts. And I know that it hurts a company's bottom line to implement it at the beginning. It costs more money, more tooling, more, um, so what, oh my gosh, what are they called? More templates, they're not templates, stencils all of that, more, more of that needs to be made upfront. It's more of an upfront investment. But let's say, let's talk about this cardigan, right? Let's say it was made with two torso lengths. Well, once they figure out the two torso lengths on it, right? Let's say we have a slightly shorter one for our short torso gals and a longer one for our long torso gals. Once they do that, they can A, implement it across every in-kind knitwear and as well shirt in terms of length. They only have to figure that length out once or twice. But also, if it's, let's say, a foundational piece that the company is going to have on the shelves two, three, four years worth of seasons, right? Isn't it worth the investment to reach that many more people? I don't know just me. You know, I uh, don't run a fashion company, but I do work at a startup where the entire conversations we have are how do we reach more people? Well, we reach more people by addressing this need that they have and this need that they have and making sure that those needs are still in our niche, but we're looking at our niche and going, well, there are sub niches within our niche. And we're like, well, we want to pull you in and we want to pull you in, but we're going to, we're going to make this for you and this for you. And then we're going to say, oh, well, maybe you're going to be interested in this and you're going to be interested in that, but you're never going to know that you're interested in our other stuff unless we draw you in with what you need. So that's why I talk about sizing because there is just so many ways to make sizing more accessible, more inclusive. And yeah, anyways, enough on the sizing. We need more sizing. That is a, um, ongoing thing that we have and it will continue to be an ongoing thing that we have especially as our the average median body type shape and weight is constantly going to be fluctuating and constantly changing and constantly moving and I think companies could do a bit more to adapt to that next I really like this cardigan, okay? As a woman who is a straight size small, I really like this. And I always want to talk about the fact that yes, I am a small, I am incredibly privileged that most clothes fit me without needing alteration, without needing anything. I fit most straight sizing and all of that, right? So I really like this. And to be fair, this cardigan, given that it is a drop shoulder, it's very casual, it's not super fitted. I think this is gonna be flattering on pretty much anybody. And I say pretty much anybody because I don't want a blanket statement that it's going to be amazing for everybody because I don't want to like hardline it like that, you know? Um, it's great. Where I think some people are gonna have issues with it always are gonna be sleeve lengths, whether if you're a bit shorter than I am, the sleeves might be a little too long. If you are taller, the sleeves might be a little too short depending on your needs and your requirements. So. In that situation, size up, size down. But it really just depends on how you want it to fit and also where you're gonna need the extra room in the garment. I like to wear this actually more often than not. I actually like to wear it closed. And I don't find that it is too high or too low. I do feel like it fits at quite a nice spot on me. And I find it very easy to wear with 
different necklines. With some cardigans, I find that because the V is too wide or too narrow or too high or too low, it can be very difficult to pair like crew necks or boat necks or anything with this cardigan. But honestly, with this one, I don't really feel like I have that problem just because of how, like where it sits, right? Like it, oh my God, okay. I'm back. Um, it's legit been an hour because I've been trying to charge my battery so it stops dying. Anyways, my hair has fallen, look different. But I was talking about the cardigan and where it sits on my body and how it is easy for styling and that sort of stuff. Like I feel like when it's done up, right, it, it hits at the right point for me where if I have something that's high neck it's not like too much and there's not like an awkward amount of the top if i'm wearing like a bow neck today there's just a little bit it's not too crazy not too bad and the shoulders everything it just works now with any aritzia merino wool stuff you have to genuinely be so so careful washing it some people are gonna be like yeah i never had a problem i've never had a problem and i never had a problem until i had a problem okay with washing aritzia merino wool i mean with washing any merino wool it is imperative to make sure you don't agitate the wool fibers to either wash it on no spin or to hand wash it and I genuinely think that the best way to do this is to fill a tub of water put your like soapy like soap in it agitate the water to distribute the soap submerge your stuff let it kind of sit maybe like mush it around a little bit drain the water, carefully rinse it until there is no soap left, and then put it between like a towel and you like roll it to squeeze out the, um, the moisture. Because I have had now not one, not two, but three Aritzia Merino wool pieces just and felt on me and even if I'm washing it in cold water in a washing machine, low spin, no spin, it doesn't matter. It's happened and it is almost impossible to unfilt it. And I know, again, some of you guys are gonna be like, I've never had that issue. Honestly, good for you, I am jealous. What does it feel to be God's favorite, okay? If there is a God, how does it feel to be one of his favorites? Because genuinely, I am so paranoid about this and even being so careful, I have still run into so many issues with this. So it is, it is, it is what it is. Um, and yeah, this is, this is just a general thing, but also for this sweater, definitely because it's a cardigan as well. Like once it felt it's, it's over. Like, I don't know if you'll be able to get it done up I, I don't know anyways I also think that when things have felted they're so uncomfortable after they've been felted even if it still fits just it's so stiff it's so heavy feeling like all of the soft breeziness in the material is gone and I just I don't know yeah it just doesn't work for me the other thing I want to mention is this is obviously a knit and with anything I have had it a little bit on the like under side of my sleeves a little bit any sort of knit kind of soft piece right when it rubs together the friction will cause pilling I actually haven't had it pill that terribly but from years of having Montpellier sweaters, illustrator sweaters, etc., I know that they will pill. And this one is pilling. But overall, I'm gonna rate this an eight and a half out of 10. It's getting a full two point deduction for the maintenance because it's just 
merino wool, this merino wool is just so fragile in terms of its, like it's, it's so high maintenance. And I think for the price point, you might as well just buy cashmere, genuinely. Just might as well buy cashmere for the same price point. Cashmere is honestly, I have had cashmere that is way hardier, way less likely to felt and all this sort of stuff. It's far lower maintenance for some reason for me than merino wool is. And I know that merino wool has a very specific texture to it. It's very warm. It's very cute. It's got a lot more colors usually on the Aritzia site, but oh my god, this is just the maintenance on this guy. I just don't know. And honestly, I personally am not a big take it to the dry cleaner kind of gal. I rarely take things to the dry cleaner unless I absolutely have to. And in that case, I am legitimately compiling months of needing to be dry cleaned because I'm going once. I'm not spending a hundred bucks every week to get everything dry cleaned. No, I'm spending a hundred bucks a week on therapy. Like, <laughs> no, not for me. So yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.